Louise fan? This is the reason why I read. And a plot twist. Everything that you can think of was in that book. Oh, I just. Oh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Cassandra here, and today. Grab yourself a drink. I am currently drinking a oat milk iced latte with vanilla. So, clink, clink. So, today I am coming to you guys with a January TBR. And it's kind of a weird one because I really wanted to stick to what I picked. So, last month I did a, or beginning of this month, I did a TBR of things that I wanted to read. And I kind of almost stuck only to the things that I picked, which I feel like that's the premise of TBR. But also, I kind of was like, you know, you didn't even venture out. Like, why is that? So I have seven books that I've read, and there's two that I am still currently reading. So I've done nine. I feel like I've done another one, but it's just been like sneak peeks here and there. Um, so I feel like I miscalculated. I thought I had 11. I am book nine, but I know that I have two other ones that are started, but they're like a long way before I finish. So in theory, 11, but I haven't finished 11. So we are on book number nine currently. So the two that are unfinished yet, we have from Blood and Ash, which is an audiobook, um, audiobook that I am currently listening to. And, and I thought it was only like 10 or 11 hours and it turns out it's like 20 something. So I'm halfway through um, and loving every second. The second book that I am still reading is I Think You Should Speak to Someone. And I actually started reading it for school. And I started reading it on Kindle because someone in like our group chat on Facebook, sorry, on like a page on Facebook recommended it really highly. So I started reading it and then it popped out on my YouTube that I can actually listen to it. So I have been listening to what I have just under two hours left. So I'm hoping that I can finish it today. Um, so that was, so in theory, I feel my goal of actually listening to a whole one, but then I feel like if I combine the two, I have read one. And now to my favorite part, I'm going to give you guys a little wrap ups too. Okay. The first thing that I've read this, this year, this month was the kind worth killing. And we are, so this is the cover, we have a couple, well, there's a guy and a girl, and they meet at the airport, and they kind of struck a conversation, they are drinking together, and he basically says, like, jokingly or not jokingly, that he knows that his wife is cheating, and he kind of wants to kill her, and the girl goes, well, I'm gonna help you, and... It was a good ride, but because it had some, so I gave it a three stars. I'm looking down because I have like a whole like list of things that I've read and what I wanted to say. So I gave it a three stars. It was a okay read. I feel like some of the things that happened, I was just like, mm, like very anticlimactic, climactic, very anticlimactic. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Anyways, so like there were plot twists, but they were just like, oh, so that just happened. And I didn't particularly like it, so I gave it a three star. So then we have um, Serpent and a Dove, and I gave it 4.5 stars. I loved it. It is quite a heavy book. I feel it's about 600 pages or so, maybe a little more. Story is we have a main character. She's a female and she's a witch, but she is on the run from her mom. Um, and she's like a thief and she gets caught in this house with her friend. So basically we have witch hunters included in the story. And so she's trying to hide. She's trying to not let anyone know that she's a witch. And with all that being said, she gets caught and there's this guy. He, he is archbishop. I don't know, like, he is like a priest person, and he is the head of all the witch hunters kind of thing. And so he basically, because the witch hunter jumps on her in, like, a theater, um, they basically are made to be in each other's path. Um, very weird alliances are made. Bantery, quick, loved it. So I can't wait for the second book. I don't really want to spoil too much. I just want to tell you that the premise, I was like, hmm... I don't know if I'm going to like it so much, but I was like, well, it has been so hyped up in 2020 that I was like, well, I'm, I'm just going to give it a go and see how what, what happens. Because that was another one of my goals that I kind of thought 
I want to read all the hyped up books in 2020, but then I was like, there's so many hyped up for 2021. So it's just, I kind of want to catch up on the 2020 books, but also there's so many in 2021. There's few people that I watch and they have like horror and thriller and mysteries that I'm like, I really want to get into it. But then every time I listen to fantasy, I'm like, this is the reason why I read. And then I read um, a book that I'm going to tell you guys at the end about. And I was like, you guys have my heart. Okay, so that was 4.5 stars. Then I read Born Darkly. And... Born Darkly was described to me as a, there's the therapist, which this is what I'm training to be, meets a client who is a serial killer that was playing traps on people, that's how he killed them, um, and they fall in love or whatever situationship, and I was like, ethical dilemmas, I thought, oh, and it's, it was described as smutty as well, so I was like, smutty romance? With some sort of like, you know, forbidden kind of ethical problem. I was like, that's going to be my book. Well, unfortunately, it was like a three. Okay, I don't know if there's a second. I think there's a sequel to it. I might give it a go. The idea was great. But it was executed, in my opinion, not the greatest. Um, You know, I don't, I don't have high expectations for writing. I am not a... English lit student or anything like that. I just want to be like pulled in. But I feel like the plot was had so many holes. I liked how they, you know, the idea of it was great. Kind of gave me a vibe of like with like Lucifer, kind of like that's 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 kind of how I feel. His therapist, they kind of Linda, I think her name is. Anyways, doesn't matter. Okay, so I just thought, well, cool, I'll give it a go. And I thought it would be like a four point five five star kind of read for me. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was still good. I feel I maybe have to read the second book to like kind of conclude everything. Um, but, and it was then she was gone. And I feel like I should have listened to an audiobook because a, a few people have recommended that the audiobook is better than the actual book. I don't know. I may maybe reread it with my boyfriend. I might just listen to it. We do sometimes listen. You know, now we can't really do much because it is locked down. But maybe if we go for a walk, we could just get our... Um, headphones each and just listen to that is all about and I did a reading vlog and review so I will I will show you guys um and I will leave that down below uh basically a girl meets no sorry we are we have this perspective of mom and she talks about her daughter that went missing so her daughter went, went missing a couple of years back and you know now all of a sudden the body is found and so she kind of get like this um conclusion I guess you know she, she get the um she gives a sense of like you know it, it happened we you know sh she's dead she's not coming back but in the meantime she's meeting this guy called Floyd and he has this little daughter that looks exactly like Ellie who was the daughter that went missing um we have family dynamic we have some drama and like the mom is almost like not a detective but the mom goes into that doesn't make sense that isn't adding up and I love how the mom is driven and she goes into finding what actually happened to Ellie loved it it was it was great I feel like it kind of dragged a little I feel like I figured it out you know like quarter um way into the book there are a few things that I was like hmm I wish that was an extra sick thing to add on to it um but it didn't happen you know um but most of the people that didn't die had a happy ending you know Ellie didn't obviously but her family kind of got a some sort of closure and I really liked it so I gave it 4.5 stars actually so the next one and that one is a kicker okay here she recommended Kin okay she is the queen of horror and guys love her videos so when she mentioned Kin and she said that it was it was very gory and it had you know it just how it's described so we have this girl called claire and she's running on a road and there's a dad and a son son is called pete that's the most important and so they see her and she is missing an eye she's all beaten up she's naked in the side of the road you know and they pick her up to help her out there is a we are in elkwood so it's like a small town somewhere in america so they drop her, drop her off to a doctor and he's going to patch her up and stuff like that but 
we have a whole family of hillbillies that are basically killing and eating people. And again, I do have a reading book for this one because that was my first horror book that I think I've ever read. I have given it four stars simply because, and you can watch my entire um, vlog, kind of how I went through it. I think it was a great premise. I just think that maybe I wanted more back and forth. So the action, because I feel like it was super action packed, disturbing. And when I mean some of the scenes made me want to gag. So if you guys are um, squeamish, it's probably not a book for you because it was gross in several places. But if you guys are into it, there's body mutilation, sexual assaults, um, cannibalism, there is incest. Everything that you can think of was in that book. And so I thought, well, it's going to be amazing. This is what I'm here for. You know, when I read, maybe because I'm not really, I feel like the idea of it is really scary, you know, being stranded somewhere with people that are obviously not all there um really scary but at the same time when i watch it in the movie i'm just like ew but i still keep on watching um disgusting and disturbing i'm sorry something that i that one i was going to give such a negative review guys i was probably like three quarters into the book and i was like i don't like it so the book that i'm talking about is monday is not coming and that was recommended on twitter which I love my Twitter fellow friends, okay? You guys are the best. People on Twitter are so great. Monday is Not Coming was recommended to me and I, did, I knew nothing about it. I just knew from the blurb that it was a girl called Monday, didn't show up to school and someone is saying that no one realized it. So we are, um, what was her name? Started with C. Claudia. Claudia. But it doesn't really matter. So there's this girl and she goes to school first day of school. She just came back from her holidays at her grandma's and Monday is her best friend. So she's like, well, I'm going to go and talk to her. Well, she didn't come in. She didn't call me. Like, what is happening? And so we go through this entire almost school year of her going back and forth with teachers, nurses, her mom, dad going into the Monday's best friend. I think her name was April. And they had a brother called Tuesday and a brother called, no, Tuesday was a girl and brother called August. So like the mom had some issues with naming the children, but anyways, doesn't matter. Um, great. So I was like, okay, that's a little slow. Like what is happening? She's going back and forth. Is that girl crazy? Like the narrator wasn't really very stable. That's what I would say. It just sounded like she was, something was wrong. And then... A plot twist on top of a plot twist? Loved it. I really did think that maybe I just wasn't the... Because I think the girls are like 14. The younger one is... Well, because we get flashbacks and a flash now. Um, and we go back either just before she went missing or like a year or two before she went missing. So we go between 12, 14. Um, yeah, 12 and 14. But actually she's 16 plot twist I'm not gonna say what happens so we are getting all those different information and I was just like oh it goes back and forth whatever whatever and I thought maybe I'm just not the desired demographic but when we come to conclusion I give it a four stars because I feel like a lot of people might give up before they get to the end and I feel like it's it's really really good to finish it and I really enjoyed it I, I almost teared up and I was like oh my god I loved it so I do highly recommend that one and the last one that literally stole my heart, um, I started reading it yesterday. I was like, do I just read one of the books that I was going to finish? But I was like, I just want something different. So LJ Sheen, I think that's her name, um, is the author and the hunter. Okay, so I've read The Sinner of Saints, uh, Vicious, Bane, all of that. I've read the first um, series. I haven't read the spinoff and I did put it on my TBR. I did put the spin-off on my TBR, so it's their children. I know apparently it's not as good, but it's the Tono Santos entire community. Oh, I just, oh, so excited. So I read The Hunter. So it was on Kindle Prime, or read, read, Prime Read or something like that. So I was like, oh, cool, I, I'll give it a go. The, the freaking cover looks familiar. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go, guys. So we have a billionaire boy, dumb, uh, and he is caught having a an orgy, 
with I think it's four girls and another dude and basically someone recorded it and leaked it online so now he's in a lot of trouble his family is one of the biggest fourth biggest company in America and they have to do with oil so basically the dad is like listen six months celibate no drinking you moving to Boston and you going to get this girl like I know her dad and she is basically the most boring person on the planet but she's an archer she's trying to get to sailor that's her name She's trying to get into Olympics, so she's very, no boys, training, she doesn't care. She's a long red hair, and this is the picture that I found that gave, like, the vibe. The boy in the book is blonde, but I don't see him as blonde, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. So this is kind of the, um, I don't know, how would you call it, like a mood board to go with the book, and then literally, that's how I've seen it. <sighs> so we go through, we have this goody two-shoes she's so strong-minded because she's a daughter of a businessman until proven otherwise so we know that her dad is basically like a mafia boss who is he loves her he's amazing to her he helps all the high-ranking businessmen but he's the guy that you do not mess with so she is very strong-minded she's opinionated she's driven passionate and as much as she says that she is not pretty, or people say that she's not pretty, she's pale, red hair, skinny, you know, and he always goes for like the cur curvy, delicious, beautiful woman. Um, and they are chucked into this apartment, they have to live in together. And the first scene, kind of when they're about to start living together, is he leaves mess all, all around the house and she cleans everything, but she puts it all into his room, like all his trash, and he comes out like, what the? you think you're doing did you just put all the trash there she said well i thought that you left your things all around the place so maybe you wanted them back so i just put them in your room which it was there was so much i, th I think three or four times i literally giggled out loud because it was so freaking funny um they had great banter they pushed each other so well also as a therapist and i feel like i don't want to be reading books from like a therapeutic point of view but he was very he wanted to be loved he never felt like a part of a family and then she because she always thought she wasn't pretty she thought she had to prove it in other ways so she never let herself have things which there's another reason why but i just loved how they pushed and pulled each other so she's very she's never lived and he always done was lived dangerously so he never cared about anything and she always just cared about one thing and so they balance each other out so well it is enemies to lovers but it's just so funny. It was so fun. And I went on, what was it? I think on YouTube and there's several reviews on that book and people like, oh, it was trash. I didn't like it. Loved it. If you guys don't like smutty books for the smut and the kink, just it makes you feel so good. It's so funny. It was so good. I loved it. So I gave it 4.5 stars because this year I haven't really read many smutty books, but that's another goal horror and smut that's what i want to read and that was so good it made me feel great i was having a shitty day day before yesterday so that book i just picked it up and it made me feel better so i finished it this morning loved every second 4.5 stars you know it's not like the most i don't there's not, not much world build, building so usually my fantasy books are the ones that get five um five stars because i have to be transported to another world but oh i loved it guys loved it so that's all i've read i feel like i've hit my entire tbr but i also had other things that i didn't expect and i feel like my tbr is going to be quite strict again but i also am leaving some wiggle room just in case someone mentions something and i want to pull it in so with all that being said, let me know what was your favorite read of January 2021. And yeah, that will be it for my 20, well, January 2021 wrap up. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if there's anything you would like me to react to next. So I love doing those reading vlogs where I just kind of go tell you what's going on. And with all that being said, until the next time, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.